Setup of the PAC-200 is straightforward, requiring some basic tools. A set of open-end wrenches ranging from 3 8 to 3 quarter inch will be needed, as well as a 10 millimeter and 5 16 inch nut driver. We'll begin by installing the torch. Visually inspect the torch head and leads for any damage that may have occurred in shipping. Remove the cover shroud from the gas control console. Remove the attached ground wire and set the cover aside. Insert the torch leads into the 2 and one quarter inch port located on the rear of the console. Match the red and green hose fittings to their corresponding coolant fittings inside the console. Use a wrench on both fittings to avoid damaging the threads. Next, connect the gas hoses. One of the gas hose fittings is marked with grooves, indicating it is a left-hand thread. This connects to the 45-degree fitting on the right. The remaining gas hose, a straight right-hand thread, connects to the adjacent 90-degree fitting. Check all gas fittings with a leak detection fluid before running the system. When installing a handheld torch, the control cable will need to be fed back out of the port and connected to the J15 connector on the rear of the power supply. Reattach the ground wire and replace the cover shroud. On the business end of the torch are the consumable parts, consisting of an electrode, gas distributor, sometimes referred to as a swirl ring, tip, and shield cup. Although the PAC-200 is not intended for use with oxygen gas, it is recommended that the O-rings have a very light film of thermodynamics oxygen-compatible grease applied in order to lubricate and seal the consumable parts. The grease must be applied as a very thin film to prevent clogging the small orifices on the parts, particularly those on the gas distributor. Rub a small dab of the grease between two fingers until it is only a transparent film and roll the O-ring on each part between the greased fingers. Snug the electrode into place using the provided consumables tool. Next, insert the gas distributor into the tip and slide the pair onto the electrode. Seat the assembly into the torch head using the consumables tool. Finally, hand tighten the shield over the consumable parts. Although the consumable parts used for gouging are similar in appearance to those used for cutting, they differ significantly in design. The gouging electrode, however, is noticeably longer, requiring the addition of a coolant tube extension, followed by the remaining gouging consumables as described earlier for cutting. Always be sure that the correct set of consumables is used for the intended application. When replacing worn consumable parts, always use genuine thermodynamics consumables for optimum cut quality and parts life. Use of non-genuine consumable parts can result in damage to your torch or possible injury. Connect the factory plasma and secondary gas hoses to the rear of the power supply. The type of gas will vary with the application. For carbon steel, Regular compressed and filtered air is recommended. For non-ferrous materials, use a combination of argon hydrogen for the plasma gas and nitrogen for the secondary with an input pressure of no less than 110 PSI. Thermodynamics provides four gallons of coolant with the power supply. Add the coolant to the tank on the rear of the power supply until it is approximately three quarters full. Thermal Dynamics offers coolant for use in extremely cold temperatures. Read the operator's manual to determine what type is suitable. 
The next step is to connect the appropriate power cable to the power supply. Determine what the input voltage will be, 230, 400, or 460 volts, and consult the operator's manual for the correct cable size and fuse rating for the supply panel. Remove the safety shroud from the rear of the power supply to access the input terminals. Feed the cable through the strain relief bracket near the base of the machine and through the port provided in the safety cover. Connect the green wire from the cable to ground and the white, red, and black wires to the L1, L2, and L3 terminals. Although the white, red, and black wires can connect to the L terminals in any order, it is recommended to consult the local electrical codes to be in conformance. Although not part of the input connection, now would be a good time to attach the work cable while the cover is off. This cable attaches to the terminal marked work. Replace the safety cover. Setting the input voltage is next. Turn off the breaker and disconnect the power supply from the supply panel if this is not a first time installation. Remove the cover from the left side of the power supply as viewed from the front. For this example, we will change the power supply input from 460 volts to 230 volts. Locate the input voltage boards marked with 230V and 460V on each PC board and remove the small white connector from the upper right corner of the panel. Unbolt the panel and rotate it 180 degrees so that the 230V marking is right side up. Bolt the panel back on, tightening each bolt firmly, and plug the small white connector into the upper right receptacle. Replace the cover. Confirm that the cable and breaker panel to be used after changing the voltage is properly rated for the machine. Refer to the operator's manual to confirm these values.